At 5am local time, the tropical cyclone Omar, currently Cat 2, was located 14 decimal 9 degrees south, 164 decimal 0 degrees east. Welcome to another update from Force 13. The cyclone is located about 285 kilometres west of Santo and 375 kilometres west southwest of Banks. The cyclone has moved in a west northwesterly direction 23 kilometres an hour or 13 knots over the last three hours. The central pressure of the system estimated at 984 millibars. Sustained winds close to the centre estimated at 95 Keating minutes an hour or 50 knots. Gale force winds 75 kilometres an hour, 40 knots will continue to affect Torba, Sanma, Panama, and Palampa provinces tonight. Damaging gale force winds 75 kilometres an hour, gusting to 100 kilometres an hour will continue to affect the region. Storm force winds at 95 kilometres an hour, gusting to 130 kilometres an hour. Heavy rainfall, flash flooding over low-lying areas, areas close to the river banks, including coastal flooding, which will continue to affect the Torba, Sama, Panama and Palampa provinces during today. Seas will remain very rough to phenomenal with heavy and phenomenal swells over the affected areas. And they also have in place a uh, advisory for seagoing vessels and people not to venture out on the sea. This is the life of the system up to earlier today. And the Joint Typhoon Warning Center has a 222 nautical miles Northwest of Port Vila, tracking south southwest at seven knots. This is over the last six hours. And a maiden enhanced infrared satellite imagery shows a large shield of deep convective banding wrapping into the low level circulation center. And most of the convection is displaced to the north. A AMSU 89 gigahertz image in depicts curving banding. Now it is difficult to definitely or definitely determine the position of the low level circulation center, and the position is based with low confidence. The initial intensity is based on multi-agency VOAC current intensity system of the T3.5, 55 knots, and the automated VOAC technique estimates T3.8, 61 knots. Sea surface temperatures are still conducive at 28 to 30 degrees Celsius. A point source to the east is providing for good westward and equitable Outflow, but outflow is weak in the southern semicircle. Vertical wind shear values are high, 25 to 30 knots, hindering near term intensification. The system remains in a complex synoptic environment with competing steering influences and given the uncertainty in the initial position the short-term track forecast is uncertain as well some models including ECMWF the GALWEM the UK Met show a kink in the track to the northwest before settling the system on a southwestward track, while other models predict an acceleration southwestward track 
from the onset. Over the next 36 hours, the subtropical ridge to the east is forecast to build at the same time that a extension of another steering ridge over Australia forms to the south of the cyclone. Around the 72 hour mark, a series of mid latitude shortwave troughs will gradually erode the steering ridge extension to the south and reorient the steering ridge to the east, leading to the system taking a southwestward track, accelerating the nubical guidance. It's in fair agreement with the general forecast track but with significant differences in the track orientation, the timing of the curve to the south and there's low confidence in the forecast track. Vertical wind shear is forecast to decrease and poleward outflow is forecast to improve as the cyclone moves poleward. The latest shear tendency, you can clearly see where the cyclone is located. Uh, not as healthy as what it can be when you're considering the amount of green. And systems love the area in blue. The A50 millibar vorticity and the intensity scale is the right hand side of the screen and remains very strong. The upper level divergence has gone up again, it's around 40 to 50 knots. HWRF and some of the models uh, indicating a CAT 2, which would be a CAT 3 on the Australian scale. Intensity, there's one bringing it down to about 9, 10. And OMA remains a system that needs to be uh, monitored. And the tracks, the various uh, tracks, the colours on the right hand side of the screen. And here's uh, some other information. However, Tropical Cyclone OMA only has to track over the 160 degrees line and it becomes the responsibility of the Bureau of Meteorology via their Tropical Cyclone Warning Centre here in Brisbane. At 2pm local time, Tropical Cyclone OMA Category 2 was located near Vanuatu and whilst it's forecast to move southwest, it is not expected to enter the eastern region over the next three days. However, next week the risk remains that it will enter their area of uh, responsibility. A look at the HWRF wind, maximum winds. We will continue to bring the latest information on the cyclone and including via our AU channel. Now we'll have a look at the GFS precipitation model. The scale is at the bottom of the screen. And the area of interest is the yellow through to dark brown. You can follow Force 13's outlets, the website, force13.com, our YouTube page, 
youtube.com forward slash force 13 on facebook under the same name force 13 and our twitter handle it's at force 13 if you wish to get in touch you can also add force 13 on skype and my personal account on discord full 13 at extension 9094